morning he's the dearest friend you ever had amen. amen i'm glad that when i'm sad he brings gladness amen when i'm fretful and tore out of frame he can bring peace amen when nothing else can when i woke up the other morning just woke up dead that morning out of my sleep didn't really have a reason i felt anxiety i felt fear i felt i mean i couldn't hardly breathe and i said this is not of god because he's not giving us the spirit of fear. And I began to pray and called out to a few friends. And you know what? Jesus came by. When I was sad, he made me glad. Amen. He turned that day what well, started out on the wrong foot. Because you know the devil, he can come into your dreams at night and get in your head. But thank God uh, we got one that's greater than him. Amen. That we can call out to. And he can what? He can whisper sweet peace to our soul. Amen. And get us. I'm glad I know what I'm talking about. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus 
Jesus is my high tower, light in the dark hour. Without Him, where would I be? He is closer than a brother. Love Him, there's no other. Without Him, where would I be? Jesus, what a friend is He's a rock upon which I stand. He's a present help in time of need. When this old world has left me all alone, oh, I can feel Him walking right by me. Just proving once again that he's my dearest friend. For he promised he'd go with me always, even till the end. And just as long as this world stands, promised he'd hold my hand that I would never walk alone. Said he'd go with me always Through good times and through dark days He would be my friend and my God Jesus, he's the best friend in my life Cause he's a rock upon which I stand He's a present help in time The world has left me all alone. Oh, I can feel him walking right by me. When everyone walks out, then he walks in, just proving once again that he's my dearest friend. For he promised he'd go with me always, even till. Jesus 
How many songs can be sang about God's sand? Well, there are not enough words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all my Savior has done. And did I mention? words to this in my Bible and I can't find them but I just feel like I need to sing it don't listen to how I sing it but listen to the words of this song because it says in one part of this song for the battles I've fought and the victories I've seen I've got I've got God to thank and I can't claim not one time that I've ever won a battle, not one time. I was thinking sometimes, I guess it would be like if you had a big brother and somebody was picking on you on the playground and that big brother stepped up and you hid behind the tree, but when he had beat them up and they were laying on the ground, you'd stick it, step out and say, now take that. Right. And that's kind of the way I am because I can't do nothing. My hands is tied, but boy, when he steps up and he fights my battles and wins my victories. He, I have him to thank for everything this morning. Pray for me that I can remember the words of this. I think it will be a blessing to you. When I look at my life and what I've been given, my family, my friends, all the blessings of heaven, the heavenly Father above has showered on me. I feel overwhelmed and so undeserving to think of his goodness and wonderful mercy, but my heart fills with joy and forever I'll praise his name. the battles I've fought and the victories I've seen he has supplied oh I've needed along the way oh but most of all he saved my soul he promised me heaven I'm ready to go I have God to thank and forever I'll praise his name well it's not that this road has always been easy, but he's been faithful and he'll never leave me. I find sweet rest and assurance within his word. My cup's overflowing, I'm living in favor, abundant provision from the hand of the Savior. So I'll lift my voice and forever I'll praise his name. to thank for everything the battles I've fought and the victories I've seen he has supplied all oh, I've needed along the way oh but most of all he saved my soul he promised me heaven I'm ready to go I have God to thank and forever I'll praise his name testifying I begin to think about this scripture in the Bible just go ahead and turn there to Romans 16 and 20 what's the word shortly mean tell me out what's the word shortly mean if I say oh, we're going to get out of here shortly what are you expecting 
I begin to think about what Lori was testifying about right there. And I know we go through troubles. I know we go through trials. And old Adam, he purged us into this. Amen. But let's don't be too hard on Adam if it wouldn't have been him. It would have been me or you. Amen. Some of us would have fouled up along the way sometime. But I like this verse right here. It said, and the God of peace. Amen. I just got through testifying myself that God will bring peace sometimes. He'll bring peace, Tanner, when there ain't no reason to have peace. He'll bring peace. To, you'll have a problem. I always talked about myself for a minute right here. There's been times in my life when I've had things I was going to face. And I didn't have the answer, Lori. I didn't have the remedy. I didn't have nothing. All I had was a hope and a prayer. Amen. And I'd get off in my prayer pace and the God of peace. Would bring me that peace, Dwayne, when I didn't have the answer yet. When I didn't have the fix. In other words, if I was stressing over money, amen, and I needed a thousand dollars and I didn't have it, and I went and prayed and I come back, I still didn't have that thousand dollars. But my God in heaven heard my prayer, Joey, and he gave me peace, Lois. And no matter if I get this thousand dollars, God, uh, no matter how this is going to turn out, you've given me peace, Lord, and I've got peace about the situation. That's worth more than a thousand thousand dollars amen that's worth more than what the world can give you when my God and your God uh, can bring peace to you in a time of trouble I can see I mean, there's probably a lot of mamas uh, praying for them youngins when they was off in the war at Vietnam and stuff it was a praying and all of a sudden God would bring peace to them mamas them boys were still over there fighting amen them boys life was still in danger but I'm glad God put it on some old mama's hearts and gave them peace that everything Things going to be all right. That was better than a letter from the president uh, saying, I think you boys are going to be okay. When God says it's going to be all right, thank God you can bank on it. It's going to be all right. And you'll get a peace from that above all things. I've had them, baby, let's go back to the thousand dollars. I've been owed money and didn't get it. Amen. And be worried about that mark in the business that we're in. And all of a sudden the homeowner or something say, well, uh, come next Friday, I'll get you paid. That might ease your mind a little bit, but I still ain't got a lot of peace until I get that money in my hand. Because uh, you know why? I've been told that before. But God won't tell you nothing, and God won't give you peace about something unless he's going to come through on it. Amen. God, the peace from God is beyond all understanding until you understand it. Amen. <laughs> Thank God the devil is. The devil's wanting to rise up on us. He's wanting to bring us down. He's wanting to make us fear. He's wanting us to have anxiety. He wants to take our peace. He wants to beat up on the families. That's what we're studying on at night. But thank God the God of peace, amen, shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly amen. amen just hang on church keep believing keep trusting in God uh, keep praying because shortly the God of your peace uh, through his word we're going to get to bruise old Satan's head amen. amen thank God that's a promise we got in the word of God amen turn over with me God will give me enough strength to preach this morning you help me out. I was up in my office. Well, this week, all week, I've had a thought on my mind. I've been excited about it. I've studied about it. I was praying about it last night again, early this morning over here to study. Then I got up here and I looked up at the clock and I was finishing up a few of my notes and it was 1038. I said, Lord, I ought to be downstairs. I starting to shake hands. Uh, folks were starting to show up a little bit. And then I got to went back to my scripture one more time and God just brung this out to me. And I was like oh Lord please not right now and God just totally changed my message at 1038 so I scratched a few things down so you're just going to get what I get so turn in so pray for me now pray for me and don't sit right there let's wake up for a few minutes amen let's get excited about being in the house of God this morning it's like I said Wednesday night we need to come in here saying God what can I do for you uh, Lord what would you have me do and I'll promise you it's not set on your hands and not worship him amen Everything that have breath, everything that have breath, 
Amen. Thank God. I get short of breath sometimes. I got asthma. But you know what? I thank God that I got enough breath, amen, uh, to get up and proclaim the gospel. And if I know, Stephen, that I wasn't going to have no more breath after the day. And God said, you got 30 more minutes to breathe on this side of eternity. You know what I'd want to do? I'd want to tell my family uh, that I love them and I appreciate them. And I'd say somebody propped me up behind the pulpit and let me proclaim uh, the word of God one more time while there's breath in my body because he deserves our very best church. He's all that matters. I say that and y'all say amen but do we live like it? Amen. We're going to get down there where the rubber meets the road this morning. He's worthy of our praise. He's our soon coming king and we need to start acting like it. Amen. I get plumb aggravated sometimes in my flesh uh, that the slothfulness of people in the house of God. I appreciate the faithfulness. The church is usually always full, but we've got families and people who are not faithful to the house of God and they've got every excuse in the book to lay down uh, to the preacher when I call. It's I had to do this. I had to do that. There's always excuse, but yet they want God's blessings on their lives. Those excuses are absolutely worthless in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. Jesus could have said, I don't want to be faithful and go to the cross. Amen. He had it made. He was in heaven with the Father. The earth was his footstool. He didn't have to come down here and suffer and die and take the shame that he did. But he did that. He was faithful even under the death of the cross, the Bible says. But yet we can't even be faithful over a few things. Amen. Our flimsy excuses are not going to stand up before an almighty God. And do not tell me. Amen. Dude, I, I'm just going to be hateful and mean for a minute. Do not tell me you love God if you don't love his house. Amen. That's Amen. good preaching right there this morning. Don't tell me you love God. Don't tell me you love Jesus. Don't tell me you want to walk with him if you don't love his house. And wherever you're at besides his house this morning, you love that more than him. Amen. I'll leave that said. Amen. I want to apologize for it. We all deserve a vacation. We all deserve a getaway. But if you're not faithful to the house of God, don't tell me you love him. Amen. Amen. I know if we get sick, I know problems come up. But there's people that just ain't faithful. Amen. Amen. They don't love God. You say, you're going to make them mad. Well, the Bible says the truth will set you free. Maybe God will use my boldness this morning uh, to shine a light on their life. And they'll say, our preacher's talking about me. You know what? You don't have to stay there. Uh, you can move up and be faithful. It's your own fault if you ain't. Amen. You're missing out on some stuff. Thank God for the faithful church. Amen. Love my Wednesday night crowd. Amen. Come in here and get a dose of stuff. A lot of people don't get. If you're missing the Wednesday night service. I know some folks has got to work. If you ain't working. Get in here on the Wednesday nights. And get you some of the secret service. Amen. It's good stuff. I don't know why I went right there. But that's what God led me to do. And that's just what I'm going to do this morning. Turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. It's done 15 to 12, but that's all right. We worry about dinner. We worry about meeting friends after church. We worry about what we're going to do. And then it's like, oh God, preacher, we got to be back here at six. We ain't going to have much time to go do what we want to do. This is God's day. Amen. This is God's day. Let's be faithful to him over here. I want to preach this morning. I was, I was wanting to preach about, uh, about Zacharias and going into the temple. And I'm going to hit that for a minute. But I didn't have no idea that I was going to preach this this morning. So you just pray for me. Maybe God will let me preach what I was going to uh, tonight. Or if one of the boys preach, I don't know that yet. I'm just going to try to follow God. But God showed me this this morning. And I want to show it to you right quick. But what uh, did you come to see? And over here in uh, chap Luke chapter 1 verse 11 and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense 
And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell on him. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer has heard. Aren't you glad we got a God that hears your prayers? Amen. Uh, he, his wife had been barren. Uh, they was well stricken in age, but they just kept on a praying. Amen. They just kept on a praying for a son. And all of a sudden, one day, uh, he goes down to the church house. Uh, it had been kind of barren and dead. And all of a sudden, he goes in. I'm telling you, I'm on my other message already. Uh, but he goes in there to burn incense. Amen. And the angel of the Lord appears. Ain't you glad when God shows up, man? Uh, down at the house of God. It's one thing for me to show up. It's one thing for you to show up. But man, it gets right down at the house of God. Amen. Uh, when God shows up and on the scene, oh, Zacharias went in there. He'd been a praying. Amen. And all of a sudden on the right hand of the altar. Amen. There the angel of the Lord appeared before him and said, fear not. Uh, your prayers have been heard. Amen. Thank God. God's heard our prayers. He might not have answered them yesterday. He he might not answer them today, uh, but your God, amen, has heard your prayers, amen. They've been praying for years, but he said today, God has heard your prayer, amen. Just keep on praying, church. Uh, just keep on believing. Uh, keep on being faithful uh, to the house of God. And all of a sudden, Jordan, we'll get to stand up one day and raise your hands and testify in front of your church crowd about the prayers we've been praying. You can say, God finally heard and answered my prayer, amen. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe it? Throw your heart. Uh, then we ought to have peace, amen. Thank God. But he said, the angel said, fear not. Thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son. That shall his name be. And he call him named John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness. And many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost. Amen. If he's going to make a great impression on folks, it's going to take the Holy Ghost. Amen. We got a bunch of windbags in the pulpits. Uh, that's a bat in the air and a drawing a paycheck. But they ain't affecting many lives. They ain't many rejoicing at the preaching. It'll take the feeling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Uh, to change lives. Amen. That's what it'll take. It took it then. It'll take it now. It don't matter that it's 2023. It's the same God. It's the same book. It's the same saving grace. It still takes the Holy Ghost. Uh, the church can take him out of the program. Amen. But they're just having a form of godliness. Uh, denying the power thereof. The power comes through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And without the Holy Spirit, there is no power. Amen. You know why churches are dead and dried up? They ain't got no Holy Power. The Holy Spirit, they ain't got the power. Amen. I'd just soon be at the lake fishing with the rest of the crowd today here. Amen. But they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's wounds. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Takes the Holy Ghost. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom and to of the just and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You can be seated. I want to preach for a few minutes right here. Uh, right before this happened, uh, God had not spoke uh, for 400 years. Uh, this is the time they call uh, the 400 years of silence. Uh, God didn't have a king in place. Uh, God didn't have a prophet in place. Amen. It was dead silent uh, for 400 years on the scene. Amen. God's people had turned every way. Uh, they had turned from him. Amen. Uh, so God went incognito on his people. Uh, but you know what? Uh, there was a few folks that still begin to cry out and they begin to want to hear from God. Uh, thank God when the world all turns worldly, amen, and when the church is all uh, turned worldly, uh, God's going to have himself a remnant. You know what a remnant is? It's a little bitty piece off of a big old piece. And no matter what happens to the big piece, amen, there's always going to be a little remnant of God's people, amen. Uh, so when the church goes whirly. Uh, thank God there's going to always be a remnant amen down at the house of God. For 400 years 
it was silence for 400 years uh, nobody was hearing from God but hey somebody's prayers uh, began to be heard God began to hear old Zacharias and Elizabeth prayers hey maybe there's just going through the motions amen uh, but they was faithful uh, to the house of God and they began to pray uh, for a son amen ain't you glad amen that God hears our prayers and we see that God heard the cry of his people. He might have been silent for 400 years, but he was about to send a man on the scene unlike any other man that had ever carried the gospel. And the Bible said that at his birth would be greatly rejoiced and that he would change Israel and turn them back to his people. He would bring wisdom to the dove. Amen. God had him a man for the plan. Amen. We see right here. That the people were just going on tradition and custom. Wasn't no power. Wasn't no moving of the word. But you know what? When I don't hear from God, church, I get nervous. Amen. Amen. Somebody help me this morning. When I don't hear from God, I get nervous. I was talking to Matt this week. And some things went on in my life that I thought was jumbled up. But you know what? God was working on some things. Uh, God used me without me even knowing he was going to use me. Amen. Uh, to get some things accomplished uh, for his purpose. And I said, Duck, I hate to say that God done this or God done that. I said, that makes me nervous. I don't just say that unless I know for sure. But I told you that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I know I'm no good. I know I'm not righteous. But I try to follow God uh, so when something good comes out of somebody like me that's no good it can't be nothing Avery but the Lord somebody help me out this morning let me say that one more time if something good uh, comes out of somebody that's no good then it's got to be God so I backed up on my statement and I said that had to be God and God used it according to his purpose amen but I tell you what when I get off somewhere and I go days and days or weeks Andrew and I I ain't feeling the power of God and I ain't hearing from heaven amen and I'm not feeling the sweet Holy Spirit and when we come into the sanctuary I begin to get nervous and worried about my situation amen but there's another group of folks that when God shows up they either don't know what's going on or they're scared to death Amen. 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 We've invited kids of our friends to the church and wonder, shame on us for even wondering. I wonder, I wonder how they'll react. Well, they go to church over here. They go to church over there. And I'm thinking, Lord, it's going to scare them to death. I've had people say, I don't, preacher, I don't, I don't like that hollering. I don't like that getting loud and exciting. You don't bother them at the ball field. Oh, yeah. right. oh no. I've had to get up and move. Little old women weigh 75 pounds, amen. Dragging around a bottle of oxygen. Sitting in a wheelchair. Smoking a Marlboro. And let that grandbaby hit a home run and you got to cover your ear up because she's going to deafen you. But you come down to the house of God and the man of God get excited about preaching. Amen. And they're like, there ain't no use of him getting red faced. There ain't no use of him getting loud. There's a church down the road told me, they said, preacher, we don't like you running around. Uh, we don't like you moving out in the congregation. Uh, we're kind of used to somebody just standing behind the pulpit. I said, so you used to an icicle, amen. You used to somebody. I said, I ain't your man then. I said, and I ain't going to conform uh, to what you want me to do. Amen. I'm going to preach what thus saith the Lord. And I'm going to do it in the way that God called me. Not by your former ways. I said that might be why your church is dead and dried up. You ought not say stuff like that. It's the truth. And the truth will stand when the world's on fire. Amen. They come, don't come to me if you don't want the truth. Amen. But I get nervous when I don't hear from God. I begin to get off in my prayer place and say, God, what have I done? God, what have I done? Lord, show me. I hate this. Let me just slow down for a minute. We thought we were preaching about the home. 
Stephen, if you come home and from work and you walk in the door and you're like, hey, honey, I love you. She just looks at you and don't say nothing back. And you're like, well, what the world? You go on in there, throw your old dirty clothes off, get in the bath, shower, whatever you do. You come back in there. I love you, honey. How was your day? She just looks at you and don't say nothing. Like, what the world? You go on outside, piddle around for a few minutes. Don't hear a word. Don't come out there. Don't say, I'm glad you're home. Nothing. All of a sudden, a little bit later, you come in the house. Honey, uh, such and such, such and such. Don't even respond. You're going to scratch your head and you're going to walk outside and be like, God, what have I done? What have I done? Amen. Come on now. You're going to go back and start retracing your steps, ain't you? Well, I talked to her. I talked to her last night before I went to bed. I said this and I said that. There was nothing wrong with that. And we're going to go back and you're going to dig and dig and dig. You know how I know this? Because it happened to me the other day. Amen, oh me. Wife kind of dried up on me a little bit. What the world be done? I know I ain't been hateful. I know I ain't done this. She's done got her head down back there. Started retracing my steps and I was like, whoa. I know what it is. When I said, honey, I know what the problem is. And I said, that's just silly. I said, don't even go there. We talked a second, and it fixed it right up. But you know what I had to do when she wasn't talking? Some people don't know enough about God or God enough God in their life to know when he's there and when he ain't. Amen. I'll just leave that saying. But I'm glad that I do. There ain't nothing special about me, but I know. And I know when I've offended him too. Amen. Ask me how I know that too. Because I've done it. Because I'm flesh and blood and I offend him sometimes. And you know what he does? He kind of draws back a little bit. Because he can't be around us when we ain't living right. If God turned his back on his son on Calvary because he was covered in sin, amen. Don't think he'll look at yours and wink at it. So when I start feeling God not around me, and Pam, I'm not feeling that Holy Spirit. And when I get in that word, and it ain't got no more bearing on me uh, than a Bass Pro Shop magazine, I start getting worried. Because when I get in this word, it's alive. It does something to me, amen. I begin to listen to it, and it begins to work on me. Uh, but when it don't do that, you know what I got to do? It's like we're talking. I got to go back to retracing my steps. Lord, what have I done? God, we're about offended yet. And you'll never do that and God not show you. Now, men, help me out right here. I've been a lot of times we'll go to them wives, even maybe, and this is just a makeup scenario. You come in there, Paige, honey, what in the world's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> and we know that nothing <laughs> means a whole lot of something. <laughs> Amen. You can take one word and say it different ways, Bailey, and it means something else. What's wrong, Bailey? Nothing. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just worried. Nothing. You'll never go to God in your prayer place and say, God, I can't feel you. God, what's going on? What have I done? Lord, just show me and I'll make it right. Who's been there with me? Somebody help me preach, amen. Who's been right there? God, what have I done? And he won't never come to you and say, nothing. But he ain't going to come to you either beating you over the head. He's going to be like, son, remember the other day when I quickened it to your heart not to do what you did? And you done it anyway? Yeah, I remember, Lord. I remember that, Lord. Lord, thank you for reminding me. Because, God, I can't stand this. Lord, I can't stand this broken fellowship. When my wife gets that way with me, I can't stand it, Lori. I'm going to nag her and nag her and nag her and aggravate her until I find out what the problem is, Avery. And I want to get it fixed because I want harmony and I want fellowship in my home. But yet we'll break fellowship with God and we act like it ain't nothing, amen. 
I get nervous about that. I get worried about that. I want the power of God on my life. I want that when I'm driving down the road and a song comes on and tears begin to roll down my face. I like it when I get in my Bible by myself and read a couple of scriptures and I'm having to wipe the tears so they don't stain my Bible. And when I get out of that situation, I get nervous about it. But we're living in a church age where nobody cares. But I get nervous about it. But I'll tell you what, when we go to him and say, Father, what have I done? I can't stand this no more, Lord. I got to get back in your good fellowship. He'll say, son, if you'll just come with me. If you'll just come with me, he said, I'll show you the ways of righteousness. But you know what? When we do that, thank God. When we confess our sins before him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. For his name's sake. He don't want that fellowship broken either. But what fellowship with light and darkness, amen. But thank God when we go to him, he'll show us exactly what we got. You know whose fault it is? Let me back up where I was at. I have definitely worried when my girls would bring kids to the church. Thinking, how are they going to react? What are they going to think? You know whose fault that is? That's the church's fault. That's my grandparents' fault. That's my great grandparents' fault. It's there somewhere down the line, Brother Laddie. We quit having church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We started having services. We just started having worship service. Now you go to churches, they got preachers and deacons, what I all ever heard of. But now you got a youth leader, you got a, a, a teenage leader, uh, you got a worship leader, you got a choir leader, you got a preacher's association leader of the leaders. I mean, they got a, they'll have 14 members, amen, and 18 leaders. Amen. They got a form of worship, but there's no power. And then we'll invite some of them down here. And they're like, oh, law, them folks are crazy. No, we just worship in the old time way. It's y'all that's lost it somewhere. It's you that's somewhere in your family that left the standard, amen, and strayed away from the old path. And now they come back and what used to be the norm in the house of God is no longer the normal. But thank God Jesus said 400 years. God said 400 years. It's enough. He said, I'm going to bring me a man. He brought old John the Baptist. And this is where I was wanting to go with the message. He asked him, he said, oh, the Pharisees was out there. Oh, the Levites was out there. Oh, the Sadducees was out there. And old John was a preaching. You know what his first message was? Uh, when the Holy Ghost ordained him to preach, repent. Right. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. He didn't hey, say, hey, Jim's will come up here and worship me and I do the little dancing and the carrying on. He said, everything will be all right. We'll get you a new camel. Everything's going to be all right. We'll get you a new robe. We're going to give you all this uh, uh, glory stuff, all this old uh, material things. That ain't what he done. He said, you bunch of vipers. He said, you turn from your sins. Uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That kind of preaching they don't want to hear no more. They didn't want to hear it then either. Old John was out there in the wilderness. The Bible said, uh, clothed about the chaps uh, with camel hair, eating grasshoppers and crickets and wild honey. A wild man. But the Bible said he was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. We worried about what we dress. We worried about how this outward looks like. Old John didn't have nothing on his mind but preaching Jesus. And preach and repent. That's what's wrong with. That's why people come in here and they're scared to death, amen. Because they've never heard old time preaching. Repent or you're going to hell. That's right. Accept Jesus and you can go to heaven. That's what John's message was. And the Bible said that the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Levites, the Christian crowd, the Bible said they got stirred up. And they went out there to see what he's preaching about for themselves. Amen. It's time we get some folks stirred up. 
It's time we get some folks stirred up. I get some hate mail every now and then. You know what? That don't bother me. That gets me excited. That means we are stirring up trouble. God needs some troublemakers. Amen. Amen. Oh, John the Baptist called them out for what they was and they didn't like it. The church crowd got down there and said, what are you preaching about, John? What's all this commotion? Oh, John said, I'm glad you come down here. You bunch of vipers. Let me tell you about it. He said, I'm nothing. He said, you down here baptizing folks. He said, I'm baptizing folks. He said, there's one coming after me that's mightier than me. He said, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. And he said, he's going to baptize you, man, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And he said, his fan is in his hand and he will gather into the garner his wheat. But he will separate the chaff and it'll be burned in unquenchable fire. He said, you better get it right or you're going to meet this man. Amen. God's going to still have some old preachers that'll get up in the pulpit and tell you that your sins will send you to hell. Amen. Amen. Me and dad was having a conversation in the van going to work. And we wasn't disagreeing, but we was talking about this. And I can't say if I'm right or I'm wrong. But we was talking and dad said, son, he said, do you believe? And I've heard this preached. So I'm not going to bash nobody that preaches it. I'm no scholar, but I'm just common sense down to earth. But dad said, son, do you believe that there'll be different degrees in hell for folks? I said, dad, I used to. I did. I thought hell might be worse uh, for the whoremongers and the child molesters and the pedophiles. I thought hell, brother laddie, might be a little bit worse for those than just a good man who helped in his community. Helped with the old folks. Helped at the senior center. But he just didn't accept Jesus Christ. I used to think hell uh, may be a little bit worse uh, for those terrible folks than that man. But I begin to study on it and think on it. And this is my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. I don't believe that anymore. You know what I believe? That I believe hell's the same uh, for everybody. You know why I believe that? Because the only thing in this world that'll send you to hell is rejecting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what'll send you to hell, amen. Because you'll stand before him without your sins forgiven, amen. And that's what John was preaching and they didn't like it. But amen, God's going to have him a remnant. He's going to have him a man that's still going to stand up and say, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I don't care what the church down the road says, you will die and go to hell and you're going to stand before God at judgment by yourself. Amen. But those that are redeemed, amen, those that know the Lamb of God and accepted him, I will not have to stand at judgment by myself. I'll stand with that older brother. I'll stand with with that one and made intercession for me. I'll stand with the one that died on Calvary and resurrected three days later. I'll have the best lawyer this world's ever known uh, standing in front of me and all I'm going to do is cry holy, holy is the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the earth and taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. Thank God. We need to get folks stirred up. How long has it been since you've got somebody stirred up about how you're living? How long has it been since you've got stirred up yourself? I ain't scratched the surface, but Diane, would you come to the piano? Every head bowed. As she's praying, or she's playing, you're praying. I begin to think about this. Oh, John the Baptist being filled with the Holy Spirit preaching like he did. He probably didn't get many invites down to the big church to preach. But he just kept on preaching. He probably didn't make much of salary down at the house of God for preaching the word. And preachers nowadays is not worth to the church what they used to be. Boy, the man of God and a preacher of the gospel was highly looked upon, taken care of to the tenth degree. But now a man of God is nothing no more if he preaches the gospel. But John just kept on preaching. He didn't care to fit in. 
Jesus said, what did you go to see? A reed shaking in the wind? Did you go down there to see one clothed in fine raiment and soft garment? He said, that's what you see at the king's house. He said, what did you see but a prophet? God, just help me to be a prophet. I want to ask you this morning, how long's it been since you've been stirred up? What did you come for this morning? What did you come for? The altar's open, amen. Are you satisfied with what you got? We come in here and sit on these pews, service after service after service, with no stirring, and we leave with no power, and it's our own fault. God help this when it's come. I want more. I want to be stirred up. I want to get folks out there stirred up. Amen. God help us preachers to have a fire and a backbone like old John. If your preaching ain't changing lives and it ain't helping folks, we're preaching in vain. I don't ever want to stand up here and be a vain babbler, amen. Or my words just tickle ears. God help me to preach what thus saith the Lord. Do you want to pray this morning? Do you want your lives to affect others in a positive way? Then right up here is where you get it. How long has it been to your prior place? Do you have weeds growing in your trail? We have not because we ask not. When you really don't even have any notes or an outline or nothing, and God just comes by and just gives it to you. And you ain't nothing but a Bluetooth speaker, amen. I thank God for that. I want our church to be stirred up. I want folks to come in here saying, what have I heard about? What would you come to see, a reed shaking in the wind? No. We need to get stirred back up, church, and let folks know there's something going on down at my church. I was watching a video, thank you, yesterday, that somebody had sent me of a church service. <laughs> Joke. If a man would have blindfolded me, he took me in there. Let me listen for a minute. I was going to look right Didn't recognize none of the songs. My spirit wasn't bearing witness to their spirit. And then if you'd have pulled my blindfold off, I'd have thought surely to God I'm in the night for someone. And we wonder why folks come in here and hear the word of God and the spirit of the Because they've been dumbed down to the word. You got hirelings in the pulpit. Telling them everything's going to be all right. Speaking smooth. Boy, you get God help me. Come on now. Come on, brother. I get to watch an old movie. It's kind of just slow and drab and just smooth and flowy. If I ain't careful, dude, I'll be sitting there nodding off. Didn't get nothing out of it. I want the pirate all for it, don't you? Amen. Amen. I can't bring it by myself. You can't bring it by yourself. All I can do is be one little old fire. And you one little old fire. But if there's 200 of us in here and we put our fire together, you know what we got then? We got a bonfire. We got a bonfire. People are going to hear about it. They're going to come see what's going on. Now, not everybody's going to stay. 
Hey, man, not everybody's going to say we didn't we didn't see that. A lot of them old Pharisees, they come up and heard John's preaching, and they went away sorrowful. Amen. But son, they were some. The Bible said that Jesus said he changed their lives. Amen. Through the preached word of God. I love you. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the word. Anybody got anything you'd like to say before we dismiss? Anybody?